Hello everyone. I am Ashutosh Srivastava. I am an assistant professor at IIT Gandhi Nagar. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Sai ROI for giving me this opportunity to share my experience about this particular grant, which is Sir Startup Research Grant. Before we move on to talk about this particular grant, I would first like to introduce uh, myself. So I completed my PhD from CSIR Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology in Computational Biology in 2015. Thereafter, I moved to Japan to complete my postdoctoral research at Institute for Transformative Biomolecules at Nagoya University. At the end of 2020 in December, I joined IIT Gandhi Nagar in the discipline of biological engineering as assistant professor. A little bit about what uh, I do. So as I said, I'm a computational biologist and in, in our group, we use multiple computational methods such as structural modeling, molecular dynamic simulations, multivariate data analysis, image processing, etc., on the data that has been generated through various experiments such as X-ray explorography, NMR, cryo-electron microscopy, SACS, XFEL, etc. We use these computational methods on the data generated from experiments. We implement the methods on high performance computing clusters. And what we get out of that uh, are sometimes certain novel models, or we refine existing models, or, or we look at biological mechanisms. Now, ultimately, the hope here is to motivate new experiments. So this is uh, an overview of essentially what we do. And now moving on to the topic at hand, which is the SERB Startup Research Grant. So uh, before uh, we start to talk about the challenges and solutions, etc., I just wanted to give uh, an overview of this particular grant. Uh, although all of this information is already available on the CERB uh, website, <clears throat> I thought it would be a good idea to, uh, to collate it here uh, and discuss a little. So the objective of this grant is uh, twofold. One is essentially to establish the group, and this is within the two years of uh, this grant. And then the next is to move on to the code research grant. Again, we'll discuss a little more about it. The selection criteria as mentioned by Sir, is the track record of the candidate who's applying and also the quality of project proposal, which is uh, similar to several other grants. Now the nature of this grant is important, which is the limited budget of 30 lakhs uh, plus overhead. Overhead, those of you who don't know, uh, is the amount uh, which is paid by the funding agency to the institute for hosting this particular project. So the, the total grant is uh, 30 lakhs. So everything has to be covered within this. Also, this is a one-time grant, so you can only get it once. Uh, however, the components of the grant or what you can ask is more or less similar to other grants. So you can ask for equipment, manpower, consumables, traveling contingency, etc. cetera. Uh, I'll also uh, move on to why I have colored certain words, certain phrases here differently. Now coming to the eligibility, uh, one important thing is that you have to have a regular employment uh, or regular appointment with any uh, research center or institute. Uh, so those who are not eligible are, for example, people who are not in a regular appointment, such as Inspire faculty, Ramanujan and Ramalinga Swami fellows, or anyone who has already got any other SERP grant. So this is essentially for people who have just joined and want to um, want to start their research. All right. Now coming to uh, some of the important considerations. So I have, uh, how I have uh, created this presentation or slide is where I'm going to just focus on few important points um, that one needs to keep in mind when, whenever they're writing this particular project. So for the most important thing in my experience and my view is to understand the objective of this grant. Now this grant is supposed to be for a short project that helps you establish the lab. Now I've written establish word here in double quotes because uh, as all of you know, establishing a lab is actually a, a longer uh, uh, task 
a bigger task than one which can be covered within two years or within 30 lakh uh, uh, grant money, uh, which is often true for most of the uh, colleagues, at least with whom I work with. So this is not so that you can have your full legit lab established through this particular grant, but this can be this can be thought of as a help, uh, and it's a very nice help that you can get uh, to start your research uh, right away. Okay. So then, what becomes important is to ask the correct question or to define specific objectives which can be realized within two years. So that becomes very important. So you cannot be very ambitious in a sense, uh, for the sake of this project, you can of course be ambitious in your career, uh, but for the sake of this project, you, you need to have problem or questions that you can uh, overcome or cover within two years. Also considering the fact that you are most probably very new at an institute, you're an independent, new independent PI. So all of that needs to be considered when you are formulating your, your problem or when you're trying to write this particular grant. Now, of course, CRG, which is a core research grant of CERN, is for bigger ambitious projects. And hence, in the objective, one of, one of the things was to move on to CRG. So essentially, this, is, this grant is uh, kind of an uh, initial start that you can get. And once you have once you've realized some of the objectives, from this particular grant, you can then move on to much bigger ambitious projects where uh, CRG can be of help. Now, another important consideration that needs to go in, in while writing this particular project is the money itself. Now, this is even more important because many a times this might be the first grant that you write. Uh, so, uh, for example, in my case also, I think uh, this was first or second grant that I was writing. And then it becomes very important to understand what, what, what part of this 30 lakhs uh, goes into which kind of head. So uh, to help you in that, I have, what I've done here is I've divided all, I've taken all the possible heads which are there or the grant components which are there. And then we can, we, we'll see how the calculation comes out to be. So manpower, for example, uh, and which is again a very important consideration, typically you can ask for one, maybe two project staff, but it is, so as per the advice that I was given by my colleagues, senior colleagues here, uh, typically you can ask for one staff. Now, again, it is very difficult to get approval for a postdoc. So if the kind of work that you do uh, can be done by a project associate or if the kind of work that you're proposing can be done by a project associate then please uh, ask for a project associate or a GRF. Now the salary approved uh, by the government norms for a GRF or a project associate is 31,000 per month which adds up to about 7.58 lakhs or so uh, in two years. So out of these 30 lakhs, uh, uh, 8 lakhs have gone in that. If you ask for two staff more than 50 percent about 50 percent to more than 50 percent of your grant money has already gone to the manpower but travel and contingency are standard so th these are already specified by SERP for this particular grant and those are 50,000 per year uh, so one lakh for travel and this is just domestic travel so international travel as far as I know is not allowed here uh, and then there is contingency uh, which is again standard which is 50,000 per year and that is one lakh so if you if you think or if you de design a project uh, where you have one project staff, uh, then already with the salary and with the travel and contingency, close to nine to 10 lakhs of the, of the grant has already been taken care of. So now you have about 20 lakhs for consumables, equipment and other costs. Okay. So we'll talk a little more about it as we go ahead. Uh, now, at the time of application, there's no need for a quotation of the equipment that you're asking. Uh, but after, right after acceptance, you will be required to uh, upload the quotation. All right. The other important point that I wanted to highlight here is the scientific social responsibility. Now, most of the grants by serve as well as 
other grants by government of India, they have this component of scientific social responsibility. And I find it very uh, interesting as well as very helpful and relevant. So this is basically an initiative where, where you can contribute to the society um, and you can make the society aware of the, the research that you are doing. Now, there are several possibilities and this comes in after the grant has been accepted, but just to get, give you some idea uh, here, there are two, particularly two opportunities that I found to be really great. One was where you can actually go and give lectures in colleges, and explain uh, your research, uh, essentially stimulating students. Um, the other is a two month student internship, which you can, for which the service is going to pay 10,000 rupees. This is again a great opportunity where you can get some really motivated students to come and work uh, for two months uh, with you in, in this project. So, th so this again, the, th this is something that you can keep in mind when you're applying for this particular grant and this is a nice thing uh, which has been done by CERB as well as Government of India. All right, so now coming to the challenges and solution. Now, in my opinion, I, so, I haven't covered anything related to uh, the science per se or the project per se, because uh, I'm assuming here that that part is first, it's very diverse. Uh, it's very different for each individual, each PI who is writing. And also uh, because uh, I'm assuming that that is something which is already taken care of. Uh, so you have already thought of, uh, you're already doing great science and uh, you just want uh, to utilize this particular grant to keep doing that. So uh, I've just mentioned here two uh, challenges that at least I faced when I was writing this particular grant. Uh, so the first one, which I feel is most important is defining the suitable objective for the project. Now, often when we are in the beginning of our career, we, we, we have bigger ideas, we have bigger problems that we want to solve, uh, which is great. But for, for the sake of this particular project, what is needed is the project to be independent enough to show that yes, you are an independent PI now, but also doable within the, within the time frame. So a, a novel extension of something that you're, you're already doing in, in your postdoc, which can be realized within uh, three years or so, is something which would be ideal here. Now, if you're stuck and if you're not able to think something uh, which would fit this, then I think the best way uh, to, to get or to understand this aspect is to talk to someone uh, in uh, or around your research area who has already got this particular grant. Uh, and that is actually very helpful and that goes on for any grant or any, uh, uh, and any academic uh, aspect basically. All right, so this is something which is extremely important and which I feel uh, plays a big part in, this, in the decision of how the grants are given. The other is deciding on the equipment. So considering that you have limited budget, now as I told you, I'm a computational biologist, so for me it was very simple. I needed a, a workstation and I got a workstation. But uh, it for, for someone who's working with experiments or, or some other uh, areas of science, uh, this is a very important consideration. So uh, the budget is limited. Uh, what, you, what, what would be the most ideal situation? What, what you should do is essentially ask for something which is very crucial for your project, okay? Uh, that is of course true, but then you have to think of uh, something which comes within that budget. Now, I have also seen my colleagues who have asked for a part of an extension of a larger equipment, which uh, either was already there or uh, they, they were getting from some other grant, but then they used this particular grant to get a part of it or an extension of it, which would help them in the project that they had defined here. The other thing is also is to also keep in mind always when, when, when defining the budget, uh, or asking for equipment is the, the manpower that you're asking. So for example, if you're asking for a workstation or computer, uh, you cannot ask for three workstations when you're asking for one project staff. So essentially you need to be, you need to be aware that, okay, if, if you're with the manpower that you have asked is one or two, so you have to 
ask the equipment or uh, for example workstation or computer or something uh, accordingly so that is something again you need to take care of uh, apart from that uh, if there is anything or if there is any question that you have uh, which is specific to to this particular grant then you can please go ahead and ask me uh, in the live breakout session that we will have and happy writing and all the best thank you